Hi, I'm Tracy Sofra and welcome to the Women of Wealth podcast. Today I want to talk about women's financial empowerment and why it's so important and why it's so essential, not only for the woman, but also for the economy and um, for the world in general from an economic perspective and from a growth perspective. So women's financial empowerment is an essential aspect of achieving gender equality, obviously, and fostering sustainable development. Financial empowerment, if we want to define it, really refers to the ability of individuals to make informed and effective decisions regarding their own finances, which involves access to financial resources, education, and knowledge. And these things are necessary so you can navigate the financial landscape. So what happens is that with this empowerment, it plays a crucial role in enhancing women's independence, their confidence, and their overall well-being. So let's try and understand the factors that involve financial empowerment. Let's go through some of the crucial pieces of the puzzle that form part of that empowerment. So first and foremost, education and awareness isn't obvious. You know, when I say that, you're probably thinking, yes, of course, Trace. One of the primary components of financial empowerment is education, obviously, providing women with financial literacy programs, helping them to understand concepts such as saving, investing, score, um, credit scores, and budgeting, and so on. When women are well-informed, they can make decisions that lead to financial independence. Did you know, just on that note, I'm going to give you these little um, did you knows throughout this podcast. When we're talking about um, education and awareness, did you know that in Australia, 63% of men and 48% of women demonstrate an understanding of at least three basic financial literacy concepts. So we're, we're not quite there uh, in terms of being as financially literate as men. Second thing is we need access to financial resources. So access to banking services, credit and investment opportunities is vital for women's empowerment. Many women, particularly in low income or marginalized communities, face barriers in accessing these particular resources. Microfinance initiatives, which are brilliant, um, and community banks, they have played a significant role in trying to bridge this particular gap. But did you know that in early 1971, following a campaign of women's liberation activists, the Bank of New South Wales, which now is Westpac, became the first bank to grant, grant loans to women without requiring a male guarantor. Now, when I say that, I feel like laughing personally because um, why would you need a male guarantor to get a loan? I mean, I know it's 2024, but that was in 1971. That wasn't such a long time ago, right? But that's when that's when it first came in. Moving on to supportive policies. So government policies that promote gender equality in the workplace and provide paid family leave, affordable childcare and equal pay can significantly enhance women's financial stability. Another did you know here is over the years, Australia has made great progress towards gender equality through the implementation of the Sex Discrimination Act 1984, establishing the Workplace Gender Equality Agency, introducing paid parental leave and introducing a national plan to end violence against women and children. Entrepreneurship opportunities. Now, supporting women entrepreneurs is crucial for financial empowerment, obviously, and there's more and more of that coming through. Obviously, with the um, with the internet, uh, that's created so much more opportunity. So providing access to mentorship, funding, and resources can help women start and grow their own businesses. Encouraging this entrepreneurship not only fosters personal empowerment for the women, but also contributes to economic growth within communities. And this is the point I wanted to touch on, or that I mentioned at the start of this podcast. Not only is the empowerment great for the individual, it's also great for economic growth within communities. It has a flow-on effect from an economic point of view. Did you know that nearly one in every three, so that's one in every three entrepreneurs running established businesses right now is a woman. Isn't that interesting? And why? 
The invention of the internet has certainly brought those opportunities into the household for women where they're able to still care for their children and their families, but have the opportunity to become an entrepreneur via the internet. Incredibly powerful stuff. So challenges to financial empowerment. Let's talk about the challenges. Despite the progress made in women's financial empowerment, significant challenges remain. What are they? Well, there's always going to be cultural barriers, right? In many societies, tradi traditional norms and practices limit women's access to financial resources and making pa and, and pa um, decision-making power for women heavily impacts them. And this is a cultural barrier. Changing these cultural mindsets is essential to, to empowering women financially, but not an easy one to do. Um, and we've got to start at gra uh, gra grassroots to be able to achieve that. And uh, that is a, absolutely a long-term play. The second challenge to financial empowerment is the gender pay gap. The persistent pay gap between men and women can hinder financial empowerment and does, without a doubt. Women often earn less for the same work, impacting their ability to save and invest for the future. Did you know that the national gender pay gap, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, so the ABS, is 11.5%. As of May 2024, the full-time adult average weekly ordinary time earnings, that's a, a technical word for um, ordinary times earnings is like personal exertion, what, what you're working for. So May 2024, full-time adult average weekly earnings across all industries and occupations was $2,014.30 for men and $1,782.80 for women. For every dollar on average men earned, women, uh, for men earned, women earned 89 cents. So $1 for the male, 89 cents for the female. Lack of representation. Well, we know this is, this is a hot topic and this has been around for a long time. Women are often unrepresented in leadership roles within financial institutions and businesses, which can perpetuate policies that are not conducive to their empowerment. Increasing female representation in these, in these sectors is crucial for creating a more equitable financial landscape. Did you know that women are underrepresented in key decision-making roles across all industries in the Australian workforce? While women make up half, up to half of the employees in Australia sitting at 51%, women represent 51% of the workforce, women comprise only of 19.4 for CEOs, 32.5 of key management positions, 33% of board members, and 18% of board chairs. Really low stats. Let me now talk about the benefits of financial empowerment for women. Improved quality of life, of course. Financially empowered women can make better choices for themselves and their families, leading to improved health, education, and overall quality of life. Economic growth, so that is for the individual. That is, again, as I touched on at the start, improve quality of life for them, that impacts their families and their communities, but economic growth. Women who are financially empowered contribute to economic growth and stability in their communities. Increasing spending power leads to more demand for goods and services, benefiting the local community. Did you know that when women, when more women work, economies grow? Women's economic empowerment increases economic diversification and income equality for shared prosperity. In the crudest economic terms, 128 billion, that's 128 billion is the value to the Australian economy that can be realised by purposefully removing the persistent and persuasive, persuasive, I'm trying to get that word right, barriers to women's full and equal participation in economic activity. Let me say that number again, 128 billion, if we can get rid of all of those barriers that are holding them back. That's a major impact to the whole of Australia. So we're not just talking about the individual, we're talking about everyone. We're talking about every single Australian citizen. That's massive, just there on its own. 
Generational impact, financial empowerment for women extends beyond their own lives. And I've spoken about this on a multitude of occasions, talking about the ripple effect, how it impacts everybody else around you um, and it cascades through your um, your immediate circle of people, uh, your communities and so on. It can positively impact future generations. The younger ones are watching us. So let's be mindful of what we're doing. Educated women are more likely to invest in their children's education and health. See how it ripples on. So if we get educated and we, if we overcome these barriers, we can overcome the barriers for the generations that are to come. This creates a cycle of empowerment and opportunity. And that's what I'm talking about. With the rise of female entrepreneurship, and you know the numbers, one in three, yeah, and growing female participation in the workforce, improving financial literacy for women is more important than ever. When these women unlock their economic potential and access equal opportunities, they contribute to their communities and, their de and the development of those communities, and they participate in the country's economic growth. So if you can join the dots between breaking down these barriers, allowing all of these opportunities and availing them to women and empowering women economically through financial education and everything else that I've spoken about, you can see how it has the ripple effect of contributing to their communities and the country's economic growth. And that has to be a positive for everyone. It's not hard to work that out after I've pretty much listed it out for you. Empowering women financially ultimately leads to stronger communities and a more robust economy benefiting society as a whole. It's essential to champion women's rights and create an environment where financial literacy and independence are not just an aspiration, but a reality for all women. And that is why WOW exists. At the core of WOW, it's all about impacting the financial literacy and the financial empowerment of women so that they can grow in their own communities and so that we can have the, the, the end result, which is benefiting society as a whole and 128 billion to the Australian economy. If this is something you're wanting to achieve in your own life and you're struggling with, if you need financial literacy and education, if you want to be a wow empowered woman, make sure to call one of our strategists who would be more than happy to talk to you about the pathway ahead. Simply go to wowwomen.com.au, click onto our programs and best of all, this call will be absolutely free. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform, whatever that may be. And check out all our other episodes. They may be of interest to you and I'm sure they will. Thank you for joining me.